Time for another one. Here we go. What's good, everybody? This is Ryan Johnson with MoneyBass.com. All right, you guys have seen the thumbnail. Ooh, and you have seen the title of this video. It's going to be a tough one, guys. This is going to be a tough one. But how's everybody doing tonight? Appreciate you tuning in on this Saturday night. Kind of a spur of the moment live stream. Just wanted to put this together for you guys. Been receiving a few messages from some of my subscribers that wanted me to chime into this. So, you know, I'll go ahead and add my own little twist to it. Do as we always do um, as you guys come into the live stream. Just tr drop a quick comment in the comment section. Let me know who's in here. Hit a one in the chat if you can hear me okay. Everything looks good, sounds good. And then uh, just give guys just a few minutes to kind of trickle in, and then we will get straight into it. All right, let's see. Uh-oh, we have some people already checking in. Looks like we had somebody stop by a little early. Let's see who we have. Forest City Fishing says the men yelling at them were actually pretty hmm, civil. I think if it was in another area of the country, it would have went far worse. Uh-oh, uh-oh, guys. So, you know, of course, you guys know what we are going to be talking about. Just Like I said, we'll just add a little twist onto it. Um, I will actually pull up the video and see if I can find kind of like an edited version that doesn't have so much... Um, profanity in it um try to keep that at a minimum and then um from there i just kind of put my input on and let you guys know what i think i will pull up the poll that i just released a little earlier today a lot of you guys chimed in on that so just give a little feedback on that and then as always i would drop the link so i can pull up some of you guys if you guys wanted to come in and just drop in you know just drop in uh, just express your opinion what you think about this whether you're a bass fisherman uh crappy fisherman uh, I don't know if they have brim fishermen, <laughs> brim, brim tournaments, <laughs> or uh, walleye, um, pike fishing. But basically, um, what I, in my opinion, this kind of goes across the board in any type of um, fishing tournament, whether it's freshwater, uh, ocean, seawater. Um, you know, it kind of affects everybody. So I think this will be kind of an interesting topic. But once again, guys, it hit a one in the chat. If you can hear me okay, everything looks good, sounds good. And like I said, I'll give the guys a few minutes to kind of get in here and then we can get rolling. Let's have a little bit of fun with this tonight, guys. Just kind of exchange some information. And as you know, try to always learn something and uh, just have a good time tonight. And this uh, live stream probably won't take too long, take too long because I know a lot of you guys are watching football. So maybe you're kind of checking in in between the commercial breaks or something like that. But let's see who else we have checking in. We have four city fishing. Let's see. He says it's a fifth degree felony over one thousand dollars. Ooh, a fifth degree felony does not sound good. If found cheating in an event involving prize money in the state of Ohio, so they are boned. Uh oh, does not sound good. Doesn't sound good, guys. All right, so let's see. Cowboy Jack says, so I'm not the only one sitting home on a Saturday night. <laughs> nope, you're not the only one. Sitting home on a Saturday night. I don't watch football, guys. So, hey, I'm into the fishing thing. So this is kind of my thing. And like I said, the, this live stream won't be too long. But if you guys are having a good time with it and some of you guys want to come up and talk a little bit, then um, we can do that and kind of keep it going. Uh oh, and we have Tony Luke checking in. All right. Appreciate you stopping by Bass Cat Tony checking in. All right. All right. Bass Cat Tony. All right. Appreciate you stopping in and checking out the live stream. All right. So we have Greg H. He's checking in. Let's me know everything looks OK. Sounds OK. We have Charles Walton. Appreciate you coming back. All right. Appreciate that. And we have Tim. I believe that's pronounced choked. Checking in. All right. Appreciate that. All right, guys. So like I said, I was just giving guys a few minutes to get uh, into the live stream. And some a few people are sending me some messages on my phone, but I will get to those later. All right, guys. So, I mean, we have a, a good little bit of people in here, so I guess we can go ahead and get started. So, as you guys saw, the thumbnail and the title of the video have a little bit of controversy going on here. So, what do you guys think? Um, drop some comments down in the uh, in the in the comment section. Let me know what your guys, you know, what you're thinking about this, what your opinions are, and if any of you guys are not familiar with the topic tonight, there was a walleye tournament that took place uh, yesterday. 
where they did catch some fishermen cheating. Caught them right there on the spot. I will say allegedly, because of course we're just hearing one side of it. And the information that I have is pretty much from what I've read and from the information that my subscribers have sent over to me. So I have not um, verified any of this, but they actually have live footage of the people <laughs> that were caught cheating, that were caught cheating. Um, so I would, like I said, I'll play that. All right. Uh oh, guys, look who we have checking in. The troublemaker. The troublemaker is in the house. Football is the American way, sir. No, no, I disagree with that, sir. Fishing is the American way. You need to turn that TV off and pick up a fishing pole. <laughs> All right. We have Chicken Hawk checking in, guys. All right. So Cowboy Jack says the look on that guy's face when he knew he was about to get busted was priceless. Man, that was, yeah, that was tough. That was tough. I mean, I noticed the same thing, especially when, uh, like I said, we'll play the video in just a second, guys, because, you know, I know a lot of guys have a, a, a lot to say about this or may want to drop some comments. But, yeah, I mean, he tried to get away with that bag, and they were like, hold up, swole up. Come on back over here for a second. Let's, let's take a look and see what you have in that bag before you ease off. All right, so let's see. We have Michael Graham. Let's see what Michael, he says, here with you. Throw the book at them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, because I mean, I'm pretty sure that the majority of the guys here are going to be tournament fishing. Some, some people are, some people are not. And actually, guys, we're kind of expanding. So we have some people that tune into the show that aren't even fishermen at all. They just kind of like the content. So welcome everybody um, that has joined into the live screen. Really appreciate you stopping through. So, yeah, I mean, this really does af affect um, every type of tournament, especially fish fishermen, anglers across the board, because as we all know, our sport is very integrity based. So your word really means a lot. And once that is met, once that is done, messed up or tainted in some type of way, it's pretty much over because people are going to be looking at you. And, you know, it, they're just not going to look at you the same. Pretty much have to pack up and move to a different state. <laughs> Try to go and hide in or something like that. Change your name, maybe. All right. So let's see who else we have checking in. We have Darren Pearson. You have the right to be silent. Otherwise, I slap you with the tail of a bass. <laughs> he put bass, but I know he's talking about bass. All right. That's right. Yeah, you had him right to remain silent. But, yeah, he could be silent all he wanted. But the look on his face. And the look on those fish's face, that just wasn't a good look either. What do you guys think about that? Not a good look for the sport. All right. Tony Luke says, I think they definitely should be banned from future tournaments for some years. So let's say it's been 10 years. Let's say it's been five. Let's go with five. Let's go for five years. Would you be okay fishing against him in five years? 10 years? Banned for some years. I, I would say the years needs to be the remainder of their years that's what i would say for that one i mean what, but like i said it's not really about me it's about you guys what do you guys think um but let's let's go ahead and uh just get through a few more of these comments real quick then what i will do is pull up the video so we can get straight into that guys really appreciate everybody checking in and checking out the live stream please hit the like button on the way in guys it really does um help to support the channel and also real quick the membership section is now open so membership is now available so for the members basically um in the chat section you will have a special icon showing that you're supporting the channel and basically that's what that is for just to show support for the channel um it'll just be a small contribution to the channel each month and you will get top priority as far as um comments and replies in the chat and things like that and just other little perks. So just take a look at it. The join button should be right below the screen that you're looking at. Uh, just take a cl uh, click on that. And, um, you know, if you guys have any questions, comments, always feel free to hop into the comments. All right. So like I said, a few more comments real quick, then I'll pull up the video. All right. So we have Charles Walton stepping in. All right. Really appreciate it. Appreciate you coming in and supporting the channel. Caught in the act at weigh-in. Yes. Man, bad look, bad look. Yes, caught in the act at weigh-in. Tried to get away, but they said, hey, he's on back over here real quick. Let me let me take a look at that bag real quick. All right, so we have John Shirley says, you, you have to know your local guys cheat in tournaments also. Correct. That is very correct. So, yeah, it's kind of a tough one, guys. So depending on the amount of the prize, it's almost to the point where you need to have lie detector tests. Yes, 
lie detector test guy. And so, like I said, there are people in here that aren't familiar with tournament fishing. And uh, so some of this stuff is going to sound foreign or kind of odd to them. But yes, having a lie detector test is something that is very important at the tournaments because it will deter a lot of um, a lot of people that are inclined or may think they're going to you know, just do something that they shouldn't. Because throughout the day, if you know at the end of the day, if you end up catching a nice bag and you bring that up and you know that you have done something that you shouldn't, you're just going to be nervous. And I think it will just eliminate and kind of prevent that from happening on, on a big scale. Um, kind of like how we've been seeing uh, every once in a while we hear about some things happening. But yes, it's kind of just a bad look, guys. All right, so Barry Celestine. All right, what's up? What's up? Good look. Thank you for checking in. All right, C219 Troll, the crappy fisherman, crappy crappy champ right here, says lifetime ban from all tournaments. I would agree. All right, so let's see. Darren Pearson says they should be banned from fishing any tournament, fishing at all levels. Right, and it's something as, as egregious as what these guys did, guys. I mean, I think that they should have their fishing license just revoked. They probably should need to. I mean, someone that has done something what they're accused of doing, they need to just take up a different hobby, just a different hobby. I mean, maybe they can take up archery or something like that. But yeah, so tournament fishing where they're going to be competing against other people uh, in general, I would say is not something that someone that is found guilty of something like this, they should just be eliminated from um, competition because, I mean, you just can't trust them anymore all right barry celestine says made it today fishing rayburn this weekend all right good look good look appreciate you stopping in taking a little time out to join into the live stream good luck out there on the lake all right let's pull up one more real quick so we have steve checking in question why not do it based on length all right so we do have some tournaments that do it based on length I don't fish tournaments, so I'm clueless. All right, so there we go, guys. So think about that. So he does not fish tournaments, but I will assume that he does fish a little bit. So that is a very good suggestion. And they do have tournaments, uh, mainly kayak uh, tournaments and maybe trout or something like that. I think they do go by the length of the fish as opposed to the weight. And believe it or not, guys, I saw <laughs> I saw where somebody had actually taken the tail of a fish and kind of put little slices in that the tail of the fish to make it stretch out a little longer so it's, it's like you just really ah, yeah it's tough it's tough guys it's tough all right so what i'm going to do now is just just bear with me real quick i'm going to pull up um one of the links to the video so it's it's kind of all over the place and there's some um some video some uh, locations where you can find the full video and some of those are uh, just little clips. So I'm going to pull up one of those. And like I said, of course, there's there's a lot of yelling in here, guys. And there's kind of a little bit of profanity in here, too. So I'm going to try to get a video where that is not as um, as prevalent and kind of try to keep it on the light side as light as possible. All right, so let me just pull this up real real quick, guys, and then I'll share my screen. So believe it or not, there are some guys that have not seen this. So it is a kind of a viral clip that is um, making its rounds right now. And let's see, let's see. Let me just pull up one of these good ones real quick. Like I said, just bear with me, guys. All right, here we go. So we'll take a look at this one. That should have everything we need in it right here. All right, so what I'm going to do is just share my screen, pull this up, let everybody take a look at it. And of course, I want to hear what you guys think. And actually, on the last live stream, I forgot to drop the link. And you guys didn't even say anything. You didn't even tell me that the link was dropped. So I was wondering why nobody was coming up. So um, let me go ahead and just drop the link in here now. And basically, if any of you want to come up and maybe you have some more inside inf information or you just want to express your opinion and how you feel about the, the topic, um, you're free to come up and just make sure you are cammed up, guys. We want to make sure everybody is cammed up and then we'll just make sure everybody can hear you. Everything sounds good, looks good. Then we can kind of get into it. You know, just have a, a little conversation, a little bit of Saturday night friendly conversational fun. All right. Let me. Uh pull this up one second guys just have to share my screen all right here we go 
All right, have that up on the screen and let me just take a look and see if I can blow that up for you guys. All right, there we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and play this real quick. Let me just make sure I haven't missed anybody in the chat. All right. All right. Yeah, let me just go ahead and take a look at just clear these out real quick. Then we'll play the video. So that way we'll have some fresh comments on here, guys. All right. So Darren Pearson says they have some kind of bass term that goes um, by link too. Yes, tournaments. Yeah, so I've seen those too, and I know that the the kayak tournaments. I I think those pretty much go by um, go by length, and I think they take pictures. And they act, actually catch them, take the picture. They'll uh, take the uh, the length, and then they'll release the fish right there, which is pretty much a, a good way, you know, to to preserve the the fish in that lake. All right, Cowboy Jack says hats off to the staff that had enough experience to know those fish were too heavy and speak up yeah yeah exactly exactly all right so we have the hype all right we have somebody that i haven't seen before the hype says cheaters Ooh, yes yes and cheaters cheaters that's what it appears to be guys all right so we have tim williams says thank you for your service my dad was in the air force all right really appreciate that appreciate it appreciate it all right and tell your dad thank you for his service all right, let's see. Cowboy Jack says people steal cage fish and take fish from others. Some local cat guys combine fish and split the money. Oh, ho, ho, ho. we're going to talk about it, guys. We're going to talk about it. That actually is something that is that is actually something that is on the poll. So we'll get into that real quick, too. All right. So that was the last comment. Let me just drop that link one more time, guys. So if anybody wants to come up after we play this video, so I'll play the video pull up the poll and then we will get into it see what you guys have to say about it all right like i said i'll try to um just kind of cut it before it gets into any of the too much yelling cussing and all that kind of stuff guys so it's kind of a situation <laughs> that goes on here all right let's see let's go ahead. all right hold on one second see if i can make that bigger i guess that's big enough for you guys to, to take a look at if you guys can see that okay just hit a one in the chat for me just want to make sure that that image is clear for you and you can see what is on the screen and remove that for you and i kind of want to get to the part so i'm going to play this out of order All right, guys, so warning, just want to give you guys this disclaimer. This does have some profanity in here. I'm trying to just play the portions of it and stop it and kind of skip past the parts where, it, you know, where it gets kind of kind of heated. But the clip that I have pulled up, it pretty much uh, starts off where they have already um, looks like they, they're already kind of investigating and found out something is wrong. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And if this doesn't show the part um so the part that I another part that I want you guys to see, then I'll pull that up and play it also. But let's go ahead and take a look. All right. Again, warning. This is going to have some profanity in it. I'm going to try to stop it. But if you have some kids around, guys, just please be warned that it does have some profanity in here. Holy shit. All right. So those are eight pounds dead weight. Police reports as someone stated earlier in the comment. All of them, every single fucking thing. This is This is a life changing event. Hey, hey. Yeah, that's Look bad. At that. for bass tournament, that for bass anybody that's catching catch release, and and you, know, it. you know, it doesn't really look good to us. You know. hey, not a a to so what it appears is that he was taking Do you have anything to say, Jay? Let me just pause this real quick, guys. I got video. So again, there's some some people that are not familiar with what is going on. So basically, he has weighed in his five fish, but what he has done. From what I've read, his five fish are actually uh, were smaller than some of the fish and some some of the other bags. So things just didn't look right. Somebody did contest it. They uh, protested and wanted 
uh, the situation looked into and something just wasn't right with his fish. He was apparently taking fillets of walleye and wrapping eight ounce lead weights into those and, and kind of pushing those down the fish's gullet into the fish's stum stomach area. So that is what it appears he was doing here. And that's why he has actually fillets inside of the fish too. So let's just go ahead and finish taking a look at it, guys. And again, warning, there's going to be some profanity in here, but I'm trying to kind of move around those parts that have, you know, that extra profanity because I know some high schoolers and stuff like that watch my show. So I'm sorry if I don't cut it out, but just wanted to give you guys that disclaimer and that warning. All right, here we go. Let's keep on taking a look. You got it. Call the cops. Call the fucking cops. Call the cops. Call the fucking cops. Call the cops. I want you to leave. I don't want anybody to touch these guys. I want you to leave. You go to jail. So I, mean, I think that really helped him that too. The camera director asked. I don't want anyone to touch me. I don't think it's necessarily the right thing to leave him. Because they do need to be there when they need to be in our lives. Investigated. Take a look at that. Look at that. He's not going to lay the weight. I mean, we all fucking do it. What the fuck, man? Fuck that. Let me tell you this whole fucking time. Hey, you got him. Hey, Jim. Hey, you guys that are not familiar with fishing, I would say that those eight ounce lead weights are a little smaller than what a golf ball is. So those are some pretty nice size lead weights. I got video. You got anything to say? Do any of you guys have anything to say? Does it do any of you? None of us would be in this situation. Again, but do you guys think this could happen? Did he say something? Take pictures. I need pictures. Video this whole thing. Got video. Yeah, so there's, yeah. there's documentary. I videoed it right off. Right 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 Hold on, let me take pictures. You fucked over a lot so of people, man. Hopefully, none of us will ever be a witness to a situation like this. Awesome. But in case you are, yeah. you got a okay, fucking boat. You got thousands of fucking dollars. You stole from everyone. This is the part where he kind of goes off a little bit. Um, but let me just pull this back up real quick. All right, so. Yeah, so that part is basically after they have completed the weigh-in. I will try to pull up another um, another version of this because, like I said, there are some people that have not seen the um, the video at all. So this is what we'll do. I'll pull up this one right here, which actually has the full video. Seventy-two this one right here will actually uh, be a better representation for you guys that have not seen it at all. So what we would do is go ahead and take a look at. This is the full video clip. And um, like I said, if you guys want to get active in the comment section, go ahead and get active in the comment section. Um, and then I will continue reading through the comments and we can go ahead and have a dialogue about it, guys, because, again, this is big. This is big because this with all of the social media that's out, guys, this is everywhere now. So people that aren't fishermen at all are aware of this. And it's kind of a bad look on the industry as a whole. And we'll kind of get into it and see what you guys think can be some solutions. What do you think should happen in cases like this? But let's go ahead and take a look at this full clip and then we'll um, then we'll discuss it. Getting those baits down there. We're using offshore snaps. There you go. Offshore snaps, one of our sponsors. Good work. Those fish. Check those fish. He's probably going to was going to pay. And he was trying to steal it, basically, guys. So let me just scroll back up here real quick, because someone did make a statement at the very beginning of the live stream. And it was forced city fishing. Let's see what he had to say. It's a fifth degree felony over one thousand dollars. If found cheating in an event involving prize money in the state of Ohio. Fifth degree felony, guys. That does not seem like he will be out there doing some community service and picking up trash. That sounds like jail time. Sounds like some high fines. Sounds like a bad name for ever. 
I don't think he's going to ever be able to tournament fish again. All right. So just wanted to show you guys that. But yeah, so when you see the passion in these guys, in the voice of these people that are yelling, using all this profanity, cussing it, and a lot of these guys are saying they don't see how those two guys made it out of there without anybody touching them. I think that that tournament director, he kind of lost his cool just a little bit. But by him saying, hey, don't touch these guys, I think that really did help them. Because if someone has been working weeks, I mean, you take time away from your family, you're staying in hotel rooms. Some of us even sleep in our cars sometimes, guys. Some of us sleep in our cars sometimes whenever we're, whenever we're out here at these tournaments. So, I mean, guys are grinding. They're out here um, putting in all this work, time away from family, like I said. And now you you do all of that and you want to be rewarded for the time and effort that you put into it. And then you find out that somebody just stole all of that from you for years. This was toward the end of their season. So, of course, now everything they have done is now in question, which is terrible. All right. So let me just go ahead and go through a few more of these um, comments. Again, I will drop the link in the chat if somebody wants to come up but if not i just like i said i just wanted to make a quick live stream to address this because my subscribers if you guys hit me up on instagram i got a few text messages and people were you know just asking me did i hear about this what do i think about it so i wanted to put it out there so you guys could chime in on it too all right so let's see cowboy jack says i'm more of a walleye guy chats are all saying he's been suspected for years all right look at that suspected for years and they finally finally got something so i mean you heard some screens of relief so some of those were screens of release of like finally finally we get some justice all right all right and we have a special guest checking in all right square biz hey money bass what is going on i really really appreciate you stopping in to check out the channel square biz make sure you guys check out her youtube channel she is you know doing doing good work out there and also if you guys have any type of businesses or anything and also whenever we're trying to expand get boats get equipment electronics certain things like that some guys are you know you may need a little help so you may need a little credit with some of that stuff and then use your money that you win from tournaments to pay those credit cards off so check out her channel she can definitely help you out with that kind of stuff um that is what she is all about making money saving money and ways to invest it so make sure you check out that channel all right so we have cowboy jack says more video out there where police are questioning them oh man what's going on cowboy jack i need the link to that is the link to that on youtube because if it is i mean we can pull it up so we can use it under fair use so if you know where that link is drop it in the uh in the uh comments or just let me know if it's on um, YouTube and then I can um, pull that up real quick. And let's see. Let me make sure I read everything. Suspect, suspects couldn't even stand. Had to sit on the curb. <laughs> of course you have to sit on the curb. Knees would be knocking like crazy. I mean, you're looking at a, what was it called again? A fifth? Hold on. Let me take a, let me scroll back up here and look again. He said it is a fifth degree felony. I mean, I've never had any type of felony, so I don't know what that means, but fifth degree sounds pretty bad. <laughs> fifth degree sounds pretty bad. I don't know if I'd be standing up either. All right, so let's see who else we have checking in. All right, so we have Goblin Exterminator, a ranger boat. They go for about 100 Gs. Whoa, so that is what they want? They want a ranger boat? So I know that the dollar, the cash amount um, that they have accumulated was um over three hundred thousand dollars so i don't know if that included the boat but hey guys these tournaments are no joke so for anyone that is watching this live stream and i appreciate you guys that aren't fishermen that are stepping in try to make this exciting for you guys because sometimes just watching this out there fish isn't all that exciting for you but every once in a while we have some things come up but these tournaments are no joke this payout that these guys were expecting to walk away with before they were caught doing what they were doing this one tournament first place payout um from what i read was forty five thousand dollars just for first place so there's going to be additional payouts but that was just that first place uh payout was going to be forty five thousand dollars all right so let's see who else we have we have c219 troll the crappy fisherman says similar thing happened in crappy in a crappy tournament years ago team purposely fished off limits lake whoa so they went to a whole different lake 
tournament director gave him an option to weigh the fish or leave. <laughs> so, all right, all right. So the tournament director said, you can weigh these fish and go to jail. I'm pretty sure it was something like that. You can weigh these fish, go to jail and take this felony, or you can just leave. And the guy left. I mean, that was pretty a, kind of a smart decision. But I think that that is letting these guys off too easy because anyone that does this, for, for someone to do this in a tournament, to me, that means that they know that there's not going to be a lie detector test. Yes, one lie detector tests are not 100%, but they're 99.9. .9. They're, they're enough of a, of a percentage to be a deterrent to anyone that is going to come in and try to cheat without getting caught. So they would rather pass that tournament up so they can live to cheat another day. So don't come to any tournaments where there's going to be a lie detector test thinking that you're going to get away with that because it's not going to happen. Okay. All right. So let's see who else we have checking in. Let's see. Let's see. All right, there we go. C219 Troll says team was banned from all crappy tournaments for life. Yeah, so so yeah, so let's let's go ahead and talk about that in the comments, guys. So what do you guys think? If someone is found cheating in a tournament, and then we can also talk about what if there are different degrees of cheating. So let's say someone um I bring I bring up that poll in just a second also, but let's say someone does what they did. They stuff weights in the um inside of a fish or they put fish in a basket. You know, something like that, something that is just definitely going to give them the edge to win the tournament. Um, you know, I mean, there's things where some people may cast with have a pole out and cast with another pole. I mean, that's another form of cheating, too. And sometimes someone can accidentally do something like that. So to me, that's a little different. I'm not saying it's OK, but I'm saying that's different than purposely shoving some weights inside of a fish's mouth. So. What do you guys think should be the consequences when someone does something that egregious? So I'll just start off by saying I think they definitely should be banned for life from tournaments. But in that case, how do you even track this person? So in two, three, four years, are you going to remember their name? How do you know that the tournaments that you're fishing right now, that there is not someone that did something like this in another state or in another tournament that you just aren't aware of? And now they are participating in your tournament. Would you want to even fish in a tournament where you know that this person has been involved in cheating in a prior tournament? Answer that one. That's what I want to know, guys. Would you even want to fish in a tournament where you know that the person that someone is participating in it that has previously been caught cheating or or previously, you know, been involved in some type of cheating situation? So um, let me just go ahead and keep going through these. Uh, chats real quick let's see man it's not worth it definitely it's definitely definitely not worth it <laughs> definitely not worth it because i mean hopefully we're going to be around for a while guys and anybody that is taking the time to watch live streams about fishing spending all these hours out there fishing spending all these thousands of dollars out here fishing you don't want to just jeopardize that for a uh, five thousand ten thousand fifty thousand dollars it's like your name your word your reputation it's just not worth it and i definitely agree with uh texas new 2010 appreciate that all right so we have dylan johnson checking in had to read something that they had won let me see i had read something that they had won three so they won three tournaments or i hope you're not talking about three boats <laughs> So, yeah, so maybe they won three tournaments, but I know they've won, you know, they, they said that they won a lot of money. All right, so three million in prizes, but that could be wrong. Wow. Now, that is a lot of money, but that's not what I, I, I saw 300,000 um, that they that they had uh, personally won. Uh oh, guys, look what we have here. Uh oh, uh oh. I have another super chat. I don't get too many of these guys. So when I do get them, I am really going to celebrate them because putting together these live streams, spending this time out here on the water, fishing tournaments and recording live footage for you guys during my tournaments. It's a lot of work, guys. It takes a lot of effort. I try to make it look easy, but it's tough, guys, because I'm actually still competing in these tournaments whenever I'm recording that footage that I'm bringing back to you guys. I'm actually out there fishing, trying to catch fish when I'm bringing in these 
mega live imaging videos and and going over things for garmin for lawrence for hummingbird to help everybody out there get better on the water so anytime i see one anyone take the time to make a donation to support the channel i really really appreciate it and believe me you just do not know how much i appreciate it because whew, i mean it gets tough out here some, sometimes it gets tough but let me read that that uh question but like i said guys square biz make sure you check out square the square biz youtube channel it will definitely help you guys with your credit if you're interested in purchasing something or especially starting a new business or you have a current business make sure you check out that channel definitely some great information there that will help you out all right so square biz says fished a little with my dad growing up i think we all did that i mean and that is how that's how it starts and something in there just the memories being outside that outdoors something about it for some of us, it just captures our heart and it just stays there and never goes away. So that's pretty much where it starts out for a lot of us and just sticks with us pretty much forever. All right. Looks like these tournaments can get real fishy. <laughs> all right. All right. Bad joke. I know. No, nah, I mean, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. But yes, you are right. These tournaments get real fishy. They can get kind of heated, too. These guys take it serious. So I don't know if you saw the clip, but those guys were very heated because they have invested a lot of time and money in these tournaments and just to know that someone throughout the year or possibly even years has been taking that from you it's a real real bad feeling all right but once again really really appreciate that shout out to square biz all right so let's see who else we have oh good what chicken hawk what is chicken hawk doing here he's supposed to be watching a football game watching whatever team he roots for i'm pretty sure they're not doing too good right now <laughs> nah his team is pretty good i think his team is the saints yeah all right so let's see chicken hawk says but did you hear the one guy yell you robbed me <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness okay that is a good one so i didn't hear this all right let me read the comment guys let me read the comment check this out chicken hawk says but did you hear the one did you hear the one guy yell, you robbed me last week? People will question every tournament they placed. A lot of blowback from this. Definitely, definitely a lot of blowback from this. Everything they have done, their reputation is dead. Like I said, what do you guys think? I mean, how would we even know that they're, let's say that they move. Like the guy's like, man, this is so bad. Nobody respects me in this town. My kids are getting called names, getting bullied. I mean, it can get bad, guys. So let's say he moves and he comes to your state, and now he's out there about to fish in one of your tournaments. Say he decides to start crappy fishing, fishing or bass fishing. So now he's about to fish in your tournament, and you the name sounds familiar, but you don't know from where. And now he's fishing your tournament. How would you even know? How do we track guys that have done things like this? Because I would not want to spend my time or my money and drive even five minutes away to go and fish against someone that has been known for being involved in an incident like that where they you know where they've cheated all right so let's see we have harry uh-oh uh-oh uh oh we have harry what is going on good to see you all right let's see what harry has to say let's see i gotta die let's see what harry has to say appreciate your service and the content you put out hope you don't resort to this to beat your daddy i knew it i knew it was a setup <laughs> i knew it was a setup and chicken hawk is in here look you guys don't need to be getting in contact with each other and talking behind the scenes because chicken hawk is is in the uh in the chat let me just drop that link one more time just in case chicken hawk wants to step away from his game because you know football ain't all that great you know what i'm saying it's not better than fishing football's not better than fishing man you need to come on over to the fishing side all right so yeah so when he's saying that he's talking about chicken hawk when chicken hawk pops up here he has a little message that he likes putting up that he's money bass daddy but i don't know how that's happened how that could happen because chicken hawk i mean he has to catch some fish first but he can claim that he has to catch some fish first so what's up with that all right so let's see harry says are you talking about the walleye anglers in a tournament yes yes it was the walleye fisherman and i played the clip a little earlier where we watched the way in and just saw the drama that went down with that so that is what we have been discussing 
And um, if anybody wants to chime in, what do you feel should happen to guys that are caught cheating in a tournament? I mean, because like I said, we invest a lot of time, a lot of money, time away from our families. I mean, we could have been spending time with our families instead of going to a tournament where someone's just going to cheat us and take our time and our money away from us. So I know that was why you heard all of that passion in those guys' voices whenever they were, um, you know, when they were they were uh, getting at those guys. And that tournament director, I think he did kind of help them out because he was standing there with his back turned, and I was like, oh, man, is somebody just going to – just going to sneak up and, you know, just pop him one right there in the back of his head since he's standing there with his back turned. But luckily, I mean, it that didn't happen, so it looks like things were handled the right way. All right, so let me see. What's up? <laughs> What's up, Money Bad Dad? Look, I do not want, I do not need Harry and Chicken Hawk talking in the, in the back chat. That's inappropriate for this live stream. That is inappropriate. All right, so let's see. How do you, how you doing, Harry? I keep a magnet in my pocket for this guy. <laughs> Just follow him. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so we have Jr. Martin. Appreciate you step, stopping in. Let's see what led to what led to be suspicious enough to cut open the fish. All right, so that is a good question. So apparently, these guys have been suspected of um, of cheating for a while. And from my understanding, the fish that he had, so let's say, for instance, if they weighed one of his fish and, it, and they said, yes, this is a seven and a half pound fish, but pretty much from our side of things, well, once we've been fishing for a while, we can pretty much hold the fish up. And I mean, a lot of time, I mean, you can't really go by chicken hawk standards. He'll hold up a, a one and a half pounder and say it's a three. So some fishermen do that. But for the most part, if we if someone holds up a two pounder, we can guess that that range of that fish by the size of that fish. So I, what it appears to have happened is that some whenever they held up the fish and they said this is a seven and a half pound fish, people are looking at it and like, hey, that fish is the same size as that four pounder you just had held up. Why is the weight so much off from what the size of the fish looks? So someone protested. They contested that um, person's weight. So the tournament director at that point, once that protest is put in, then they go and investigate. So as you saw in the video clip, the guy was trying to ease away with his bag of fish. And the tournament director was like, hold up, swole up. You need to come on back over here because I have to check those fish. So the guy was trying to ease away. But that is what pretty much brought up the suspicion and plus someone was contesting it so at that point he's going to take a look at it and what you can do is when something doesn't look right that's i mean th it was just kind of crazy that that person put that big those big lead weights in there and what he did he tried to hide those and disguise it by wrapping them up and tying them up inside of uh, other fish fillets and shoving the fish fillet so he took a a fillet of fish, a fillet of fish, put those two pieces together and slid the weights inside of those fish and wrapped it up with string and shoved it down the fish's throat. So apparently these walleye are pretty big fish for him to be able to do that. So then he shoved it down the fish's throat, thought that he would get away with it. But somebody that is experienced, they can kind of touch that fish and see that something does not feel right. So that's why he cut those fish out open like that. And the fish were already dead in walleye tournaments at, in this particular walleye tournament it doesn't appear that they um necessarily catch and release the fish but in bass tournaments i believe in i'm pretty sure in crappy tournaments also um we catch the fish you get penalties if the fish are dead and then you release them so since their fish are dead anyway he just took the knife cut those fish open and that is what led to all of the outrage all of the everything that you saw which was pretty pretty crazy I mean, that outburst once he said there's weights in these fish or I believe that's what he said. He yelled out something like that and everything just went crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was wild. All right. So Harry says they should be banned and reported to each state. We are always inappropriate. Wait a second. We are always right. Yeah. So that that is what I, I, I feel also. They should not be able to buy fishing license in any states. So I think that alone but i don't even know if those databases would be uh interlinked to where they communicate with each other so that's what i'm saying it's like yes we see this and this is like a very very bad case to the point where i think if we hear this name for a few years that 
people will investigate. But what about five or 10 years from now? He may be able to ease back in there. And if his integrity level is to the point that it is now, who's to say he won't try to steal five thousand ten thousand dollars so right now again guys all of this is alleged things that have happened even though you saw it right there live on video he didn't really say anything and um someone did mention that there is video out there of the cops questioning them so we'll keep uh, uh what i'll do is i'll keep you updated um because i mean it's a pretty interesting story that's going on so yeah i think it's gonna be a pretty big thing especially with social media and people that aren't even involved in fishing take taking um you know paying attention to this uh oh guys uh oh look what we have we have julian browning all right stepping into the live stream really really appreciate you stopping in been fishing with julian a few times and this is the first time that i think you have stepped into the live stream but he is dropping in and showing love and supporting the channel Really, really appreciate it. And guess what? No question, no comment. Just pure love. Just dropping pure love, pure, su pure support for the show. Really, really appreciate it. We have to hook up, get back out there on the water again. It's been a while, so hey, got to get back out there. All right, really appreciate it, Julian. All right, let's see who else we have. Al Smalls, good information tonight. Question in walleye fishing. Let me see, question. And walleye fishing need to be live or dead. It was a lot of fish not alive. So from what I read, they do have walleye tournaments where they where it appears that they don't have to bring in live fish. And it, like you said, there were a lot of them dead. I would think, and again, I don't know because I'm not very familiar with walleye fishermen in general, but it, it did look like this was a tournament. And I forgot how they actually, I don't know if they called it a dead tournament or whatever they said, but whatever the name of it was, it implied that these fish that they bring in are more than likely not going to be alive. And the and what they were questioning is what is the population of those particular species of fish like if they are bringing them in and they're not catch and release because it can deplete a, a, a specific species of fish if that is not managed correctly. All right, so I hope that answers your question. Need to be dead or alive. So I think they have both. Some of them that where they have to bring them in alive, and some of them where it doesn't matter. In the tournaments that I fish, which is bass fishing, we have to bring those fish in alive. If we do bring in dead fish, then we are penalized for that. So we really try our best to keep those fish alive. All right, so Cowboy Jack says, seems like the total weight being reported in the chats and social media is eight pounds of added weight. Yes. That is correct. They had eight pounds of weight spread out within five fish. Those lead weights, let me see, how can I do that, are big. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, those lead weights are big. They're probably about the, a little bit smaller than a, um, than a golf ball. So not quite the size of a golf ball would be my guess, but a, 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 an eight-ounce weight. So there were eight-ounce weights um that they had put inside of those fish and they were spread across um four um five fish so i think each fish they had put three of those big lead weights inside of those fish so yes that is correct all right so harry says chicken hawk and i are always inappropriate <laughs> that's right that is inappropriate for this live stream all right so texas nuke 2010 says now with social media they can go anywhere and show the oh they can't go anywhere and show their face I feel for their families, man. Ouch, ouch. Yes, that that is that's that's just bad. That's just bad. I mean, especially if you have you know kids and family, friends, all that kind of stuff. I mean, how do you even? Yeah, how do you even show your face? I mean, it would just be it would be tough. It would be tough. But they did it to themselves. They did it to themselves, guys. But yeah, I mean, their family and stuff, they don't really uh, deserve that heat or pressure that they may get, you know, from just being affiliated or associated with somebody that would do something like this. So once again, this is something big, guys. It is pretty big. All right. So Cowboy Jack says many walleye waters are stopped, um, called out and take others are cpr i'm not sure what that is others are cpr okay but okay so yeah so they're stock lake so yeah if they're stocked 
then that does make sense where where they're taking those fish out and then they're just replenishing the fish instead of catching them and um and releasing them because i know here like lake lake lanier for instance they have a lot of nice size stripers in there the stripers um those don't reproduce on their own in the lake so those are all stock fish so um i can i can see that i can see that all right let's see what is this gn daddy gndo uh let's just call it gn how about that have you tried the new minkota lift assist mount for your mega live mega 360 or talk to anyone that has it all right hey all right guys that is an electronics uh hummingbird boat question so that is mainly what we do here every once in a while i'll do reviews show tournament videos but for the most part we do talk about electronics so those are always welcome all right so i have not used the lift assist if anybody in the chat has used the lift assist for the mega live mega 360 please drop some comments um if you have a specific question about it um gn go ahead and drop that in the comment section more than likely there will be somebody in there that is familiar with it if not during the live stream but during the the um the replay there will be people that come back and watch it and they will see your question and they may drop that down in the comment section so always read the description of the videos guys and also um always read the um the comment section because there's information that can help you out in there and actually let me just check something real quick let's see let's see just checking one of the settings on this video guys i just want to make sure that um that you guys are able to go back and read the comments if you need to um, because like i said we're always here to try to help each other out and just help each other get better on the water and just share these war stories share these you know these these drama driven things that come up every once in a while all right so let's see cowboy jack called uh cold put and take call down and take called put and take yeah so i've never heard of that before i'm not really sure what that is all right so let's see harry says what is your opinion with the new 360 adapter they just came out with man you're ahead of me larry i've been out here i've been fishing today i was out there trying to get ready for the ready for this tournament <laughs> next weekend it's tough out there it's tough out there and then on my way back i heard about this story so i hopped straight into this so i have not had a chance to look into that um but for the next live stream i will it'll be on tuesdays guys so tuesday 8 p.m make sure you stop back in not sure what the topic will be yet but make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification right now doesn't look like youtube youtube is sending out a lot of no notifications so just make sure you subscribe to the channel so that way anytime the videos are put out or i put out new content um you know it'll let you guys know and you can be aware of that but on tuesday um maybe i have some more information on that for you and i can give you you know give you a more in-depth answer at that time all right let's see catch photo oh catch photo release use an app on a measuring board yes so that i think i've seen some kayak uh tournaments doing that so i don't yeah so i don't i'm, I'm maybe yeah and actually actually there is a tournament that they do on lake lanier where they actually do they will weigh the fish and they'll take a photo of it and they'll release the fish back so yeah that's definitely something that can work but man it's just tough because there's always going to be somebody out there that's going to try to beat the system so we just have to do things in a way to where it's best for the participants and best for the um for the uh for the fish as well all right so let's see harry says cowboy jack they have caught people cheating doing that with kayak trail trails as well right so that's my point it's going to always be somebody out there that tries to figure something out because what i saw with kayak fishing fishing they actually measure the they measure the fish so this person is taking taking something and kind of sliced the fish's tail in a way to make it just a little bit longer so that it would be a legal fish but in the picture that they had they didn't hide it enough to where it wasn't noticeable by the um by the tournament director all right so let's see who else we have all right harry says i meant mega live not 360 um okay so you're talking about the target target lot more than likely let me just take a look at your question again all right cowboy jack uh hold on one second where did it go all right what is your opinion with the new mega live adapter they just came out with so i think you're talking about the target lot so my opinion on that is that it is great especially for offshore fishermen 
which is me. And I want one, but I don't have one yet. And actually, makes let me put uh, put this banner down here. If you are interested in that um, Hummingbird G3N 10, I'm sorry, G4N. It's a G4N, the newest units that they have um, for Helix. And it is a 10-inch mega down imaging. It's a Chirp Mega DI Plus unit. Um, that I'm looking to sell that so that I can use those funds to put into purchasing my target lock system. So if anybody is interested in that, I've had a few people ask about it, but nobody has hit me up on um, Instagram yet. Well, one or two people did, but I haven't heard back from them yet. So if you are interested in that, like I said, I'm going to sell it below retail price. So I know um, right now some people are still having a hard time getting their hands on some of these um, units. So if you're interested in it, please um, hit me up on my Instagram or um, or my email. I think I have my email down in the um, in the in the description area also. But yeah, just let me know, and then we can um, we can take a look at that. All right. So let's see. Let me go back to the comments. See what else we have in here. Cabo Jack. Uh, all right. Okay. okay. All right. And then so Cabo Jack says, absolutely. Yes, that is true. They have caught people cheating in kayak tournaments also. Harry said, okay, I already read that one. All right. Double H outdoors. All right. Drop some money signs. What's going on? Oh, what's going on? I know who that is. What is going on? We have double H outdoors. What's going on with the videos, man? You always out there catching those hogs. I want to see what you got. I want to see what you've been catching. All right. Appreciate you stopping in and checking out the live stream. All right. Keep going through some of these comments, guys. So, hey, looks like you guys are enjoying it. So if you have any more um, comments or questions or anything about that tournament, I'm interested to see what do you guys think should happen to someone that is caught cheating in a bass tournament? That's one. Well, not just the bass tournament, but in a tournament in general. What do you think should happen to that person? And then the other thing is, if you yourself are in a tournament and now you see someone that you know, let's say that two, two, three years from now, you see this guy. Now he's changed over to start fishing whatever. If you fish crappy tournaments, bass tournaments, brim tournaments, whatever type of tournaments you fish, now you see this guy has moved to your state and is about to fish against you. How would you feel about that? Are you okay with fishing with someone after a certain amount of time has gone by and now maybe they have moved and someone says, yeah, we just suspend them for two years, three years. Is that OK? Do you still feel comfortable with that? That's the other thing. I just wanted to see what you, what your input would be on that. All right. And let's see who else we have here. All right. Harry, Harry says topics should be setting the hook on twigs and hoping they turn into fish. <laughs> All right, Harry. Harry's dropping a bunch of inside jokes. I don't think anybody here knows what you're talking about, and that's inappropriate for this live stream. Listen, you and Chicken Hawk are behind the scenes back there collaborating on comments to throw in here. All right, Al Small says, it's like when people give out um, waypoints, is that cheating too? So they do have certain rules to where you can you can even go out with guides. You can share information with people and there's different time limits to where there's off, off limits. So some, some tournaments, depending on how big they are, they may say that the lake is off limits or getting information is off limits. All of that is off limits until up to one or two weeks before the tournament. You just have to be familiar with the rules. So, cause you could go fishing with someone, um, and they may take you to a, a spot that is a, a specific waypoint. And depending on what the rules say, that could be within the bounds of that um, within that tournament. And I know some tournaments, um, they allow the contestants themselves to share information because, believe it or not, that even though you're competing against someone, you still share information with them because you still want other people to succeed. If you're if you're competing against, say, 200 people and your buddy is in the tournament as long as you stay within the guidelines of the rules, those guys may share information so that they both can do well. I mean, like instead of getting 10th place, maybe you'll help your buddy get 7th place or instead of getting 50th place, they'll get 30th place. So you're not necessarily competing against, against each other. You're trying to just do the best that you can. So so people will help each other out. So that's just one of the things where you have to follow the rules that are in place as far as that, um, whether you can share waypoints or not. All right, Cowboy Jack says they put fish 
They put in fish and expect people to take out in the areas where spawning is unsuccessful or low. Right. Yeah. So that's how they kind of keep those stocked. And that's kind of um, kind of the same thing that I was saying about the striper. They'll they will stock those fish in those areas. So, yeah. So we're, we're going over a, a bunch of different topics, guys. So I want to see if anybody has anything else to say about the uh, the tournament footage that we saw because like i said it's kind of big and this isn't going to go away especially with so social media the way that it, that it is i mean i'm pretty sure it's on tiktok it's on um instagram it's on goodness what's the other thing facebook yeah all of that stuff i'm pretty sure it's everywhere so people that aren't familiar with fishing are now they now know about the uh, the um, cheating of the tournament and they probably are just finding out a lot of people are just finding out how much some of these tournaments actually pay that was a $45,000 payout that they were trying to sneak away with in that one. All right, let's see what else we have. We have Barry says, let me see. I have not heard about the lift assist. Where can I get info on it and purchase? Yeah, so I don't, um, actually, I think I did hear something about it, but I don't have any info on that. So maybe on our Tuesday live stream, um, more than likely, we'll be going over some some something about the electronics, um, live imaging, something like that. So if you guys are wanting to get be better with your electronics, make sure you subscribe to the channel and join into our live streams. They're kind of the same thing. And I pull guys up on the screen. We share information, all of that kind of stuff. And always just try to have some fun. All right. So let's see who else we have. Harry says, not Target Lock, but another one that came out Friday. Hmm. I haven't heard about that. I've been out fishing. What is today? Today, today's Saturday. Yeah. So, I, yeah. So I've been fishing. I haven't, I haven't researched anything yet. So yeah, that's definitely something I'll look into. All right. And Harry says, I will hit you up early this week. Not on Instagram. Okay. Um, hmm. Yeah. I'm not too good with all the social media stuff either, Harry. Um, so I'm not sure how to send you a way to get in contact with me. I'll figure something out. I'll figure something out. All right, so let's see. Harry says, Mega Live Hand Control. Hmm, that sounds interesting. Anything to assist with that live system? Because live is great. <laughs> so anything to help out with that. All right, so you said the hand control may be better than target lock. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely interested now. All right, and let's see. Uh-oh, look who we have checking in. <laughs> Look who we have checking in, Stephen Walden. What does Stephen have to say? Stepping in here about two hours late. <laughs> you can start now. I'm here. <laughs> okay, yep. All right. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. We are just getting started with this week's live stream just for Stephen. No, nah, I'm just messing with you, man. Good to have you stepping in. Good to have you uh, checking out the live stream. All right, Double H Outdoors. I've seen a lot of shady stuff in tournaments from having guys that's not in tournaments hold spots for you to having them find them and call you with lure and line. So that's basically sharing information and I guess playing defense, blocking people from fishing certain areas where fish are holding up and sharing information during a tournament. So, yeah, so those two things are a form of cheating. I don't think there's any, um, you know, tournament rules that say that you can do that, that you can have people out on the lake holding spots for you and then giving you information during the tournament of how to catch those fish. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's all, you know, it's all comes in all shapes and sizes out there. All right. And let's see what else he says. All right. The wine. Uh, I'm not sure what that one says, Double H. All right, and let's see. <laughs> Stephen says what I missed. Harry, can you um fill Stephen in on everything that we have talked about for the past hour? Because he he's wanting to know what he missed. So if you could fill him in, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> All right, Harry says, I feel for their families if they are married and with kids. Yes. <laughs> Yes, definitely, definitely. Hopefully they will turn over a new leaf and ask for forgiveness and do the right thing moving forward. I agree. And I think the word moving is a key word in there because, yeah, that would be tough for something this big. I mean, that's a lot of money, $300,000. 
and you live around these people that you stole that from, that you allegedly stole that from, that's tough. I mean, there's people out there that have fist fight you for fifty dollars, and you took three hundred thousand dollars from people. That's allegedly took that those funds from somebody. That's that's tough. That's tough, especially when some. I mean, you never know how people are out there making their money. Somebody could be digging ditches for. I don't know what minimum wage is now, but if they're out there digging ditches in the rain and stuff, using that money to pay their way into tournaments, and then somebody comes along and steals that, that's that's tough. That's tough right there. All right, so we have Wendell Wade says hand control is not better. Hmm. All right, so hand control. I need to look into that. I'm still interested because I don't have target lock yet. I want it, but let's. See. I'll look and see what hand control is. All right, and let's see. Harry says, I don't know, Stefan, but you better tread lightly, money. Don't make Chicken and myself get on his side. Oh, Stefan is not going to convert to the dark side. He he fished with me as a co-angler a few times. So, Stefan, don't let them talk you into coming over there with them. I don't know what Chicken Hawk is still trying to ease in here for. Look at Chicken Hawk coming in here. Speaking of cheating, are you going to join my tournament trail? No. The no electronics trail will real fishermen fish. But if you're scared, say you're scared. <laughs> this is my response to that. That would be called the nine fish catching trail. How about that? How about that? I'm not gonna join that chicken hawk. We still gonna meet out there on on, uh, on Gunnersville. You want to come up and, uh, and let people give a fishing report on Gunnersville? <laughs> How about you come up and do that? All right. So let's see. Harry says Mega Live Hand Control Universal got an email from Humbird at 9:50 a.m. Friday. All right. So yeah, I'll check into that, and I may have received the same thing, but I just haven't um, been checking into that yet. His back must be hurting from carrying you as a co-angler. <laughs> that is inappropriate for this live stream. All right. So Stefan says, did you talk about the rock pile that got put on Keith Poche's? What is What is? Did you talk about the rock pile that got put in Keith Poche's hole on the third day of the Bassmaster Open? Haven't heard about that one, but that doesn't sound like that was uh something good sounds like that may have been a little shady a little on the shady side all right and let's see all right so gn tried to put a message in there but that did not come up about the mega live it may have been a link so i don't know if, if they allow links to be put into the comment section i'm not sure all right guys looks like you guys have uh kind of fizz fizzled through your um comments questions and everything about the the um the uh the video that we watched with the little situation that took place. All right. We have T says any ice guys in here. So any ice fishermen in the chat, let's see if anybody replies back to T, maybe he needs some information about some ice fishing, ice fishing. All right. And Harry says that did not happen as well. <laughs> Wait, that did happen as well. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right, guys, so we have been rolling for about an hour and 15 minutes. All right, there you go. All right, T and Cowboy Jack. Make sure you guys get active in the comment section. So even after this live stream is over, you can hop into the regular comment section and put some comments that down there too. So that way you guys can kind of um, chit chat, share information and stuff like that. Um, even after the live stream is over, because guys, remember, we are building a community here. We're building a community. Also, I have set up the membership. So there's a membership available. So anybody that wants to support the channel, you will get a special badge. You will get um, pr priority as far as your messaging and everything goes in the live streams. And there will also be some other perks um, in the Patreon that you guys will um, find out about. So down right below this video you will see a button that says join if you click on that there's a quick video that just kind of goes over the details of that but if you want to support the channel 
um, just go ahead and take a look at the um, membership. Just click the join button and it, that you don't join immediately. When you click that join button, it will take you to a link that will give you the information of how to support the channel. Really appreciate it, guys. So let me just go through a few more of these comments real quick. All right. T says running mega live on the ice cowboy. So is he, he's asking you if you're running mega live. All right. Let me just pull that up real quick just in case you didn't see it. Cowboy Jack running mega live on the ice. All right. So I, and I think you can see the, the comments that are um, coming across in there also. All right. Rock Pal was on Red River. All right. So he's clarifying that for you. All right. Any of you guys coming to join the Rod Benders? All right. Yeah. So uh, Stefan is a member of the Rod Benders Bass Club, which I am also a member of. So um, we have our our monthly tournaments there. So he's just asking is if any. And there were uh, some uh, a few guys that were in the uh, chat in a, a few of the live streams previously that were looking for a bass club. So if any of you guys are interested in joining a bass club, go to www.robbendersbassclub.com. You can get more information. There's contact information on there. If you're looking for a bass club, very great um, bass club to be a part of. So just take a look at that. All right. Appreciate that, Stephen. All right. And let's see. TV 18 says steady scope by first first build. I think they said around 500, um, 500 bucks. All right. So I think you guys may be um, talking about something in the back chat. All right. And let's see. Rock Power was on the Red River. I already read that one. All right. Wendell Wade says this always happens on the Harris chain in Leesburg, Florida. Hmm. Yeah, guys, getting kind of tough out there. Yes, Helix 9 ice combo with Summit fishing pole with boat and ice fishing conversion. All right, so y'all are talking that ice fishing lingo. I'm not really too familiar with that. All right, so let's see. T says, have a total hummingbird boat and live scope. Looks better on ice from what I have seen. Okay, yeah, and I wonder if um, maybe with ice fishing, since you don't have any of the chop or anything on top of the water, and then maybe you don't have that glare coming through from the sun. If that those two things alone could add a little bit better um, quality to the to the image that you're seeing. All right. And Cowboy Jack says ice fishing is static. You have time to dial in and get a great picture. Can see one sixteenth ounce jig at 20 feet down. Yeah. So that's that's kind of what I was thinking also. All right. So, yeah, you guys are. Having a good little conversation back there. I run and gun with a wheeler and portables until I drive my truck out with the Yeti. All right, guys. All right. So like I said, we have been going for now about an hour and 20 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Like I said, guys, please hit the like button on the way out if you did not hit it on the way in. And also, don't forget, please check out the membership um, link. I'm trying to make sure we build this community and continue to expand, and that will be a great addition to it. Um, let's see. Anything else? Anything else? Make sure you guys read the description. I really appreciate you stepping in, checking out the live stream, and showing all the love and the support. Special shout out to, let me just go back to this real quick, Julian Browning. Let's see. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Appreciate this, Julian. All right, so we have Julian with the super chat. Really, really appreciate that. Appreciate the support of the channel. All right, and we also have, you guys do not forget to check out the channel for Square Biz. All right, really, really appreciate that too. Really appreciate it. All right, guys, another one in the books. We will be back on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Make sure you guys tune in then. I really appreciate the support of the channel. I will see you guys on the next video.